the man who gets heavy with the metal, Jeremy Clarkson. In a desperate bid to bring peace once again to this sceptered isle, the USS Nimitz today arrived off the coast with her full complement of F-14 fighters. Now, ordinarily, the might of the US Navy's flagship would be no match for the robots on Robot Wars, but tonight, things are a little different. Tonight, it's a lightweight special where all the robots weigh less than 12 kilograms. They're small, but don't worry, they're still vicious. So let's go and meet the only machines in the world that are brave enough to spill Prince Nassim's pint. First, from Romford, Victor of Armageddon. And the riders of the Apocalypse team, driven by two 14.4 volt motors, it has the same speed controller as used for bomb disposal robots. From Milton Keynes, Crazy Tokyo. This school design robot based in Tokyo is very light at 3.2 kilograms and apparently is driven by a teddy bear. Has a top speed of 12 miles an hour and a zero turning circle. From the University of Reading, Cunning Plan. Designed by a Star Wars fan, but Cunning Plan looks nothing like R2-D2 or as frightening as an Imperial Starfighter, a defensive wedge with an aluminium steel shell. From Billericay, Saturn. Built by Essex schoolboys, those Saturn pointed horns are made of shelving brackets bolted together. But a turning circle of a sluggish three meters could leave these hopes blunted. From Chetham School, Bugs. A GCSE school project, the front of Bugs is fashioned as an aluminium ramming wedge. And at 40 centimeters, Bugs is the tallest robot in our starting lineup. From London, the Demolisher. With licensed stealth technology so undetectable by enemy radar, the demolisher's obviously too quick for its own good. Quickest in the field at 40 miles an hour, and also the smallest at an itsy bitsy 60 centimeters. Back to you, Jeremy. Remember, some of the deadliest creatures in the woods are also the smallest. The song thrush, the earwig, the hedgehog. Let's see what's what with the first event. First of all, you have to exit the carousel, which isn't easy, even for me. And then it's decisions, decisions, decisions. Do you take the safe but rather slow route to my right, which involves a maze and some spikes, or the middle ramp route, which also has its ups and downs? Or do you face Sergeant Bash, complete flamethrower? Whatever you do, by the time you get to this end, you better watch out because Matilda has the freedom to roam across the whole of the finish line. And her tail just happens to be a chainsaw, so you don't want to get on the wrong end of her. There's also the pendulum to look out for. But whatever route you decide to take, the worst performer is eliminated. So let's find out who it's going to be. Roboteer, start your battery. Robot ears, stand by. First to take on the gauntlet is Cunning Plan with Oliver Steeples, a fourth-year engineering student. His hero is Star Wars creator George Lucas. This is Cunning Plan. It's a basic wedge design. It's got an aluminium and steel body shell for overturning and ramming other robots. Three, two, one, activate. Out comes Cunning Plan. Small, quick, darts into the maze with that Zero degrees turning circle, which could be so vital here for the faster featherweight machines. He is Joe 90, isn't he, Oliver Steeples? And basically, the smaller robots have to dodge anything. The house robots could take them out, certainly the drills could. And Matilda, out to splatter a small fry. She's a darling, isn't she, Matilda? Modelled on my mum. Oh! That's good manoeuvrability, but again, crunch, you see. He's got to dodge it onto the spikes here. He'll wait until the spikes go down, and then spurt on. Good run by Cunning Plan. Appropriate name, Cunning Plan. Maybe. You were looking pretty pleased there. Uh, the spikes are a bit tricky. The robot didn't give me any problems. What, the, the spikes are tricky but Matilda isn't? Well, I'm looking forward to you going head-to-head -head with that. Should be good luck. Well done. Anytime. 
cunning plan. First to go, first to complete, and first name up on the leaderboards. Roboteers, stand by. Kevin Church, Matthew Davy, and Chris Purchase, all GCSE students. Three, two, one. Activate. Crazy Tokyo boys all studying for GCSEs. <laughs> what on earth have they made this thing from? <laughs> One of its weapons is that curved bumper they say to push opponents out of the way. It seems to me to have been made out of get from those stickers you get in bubblegum packets. <laughs> Pass the drill. <laughs> Stuck on the grill, <laughs> and the drill again, you get mangled there. It's a, a case of run away, run away. <laughs> Take you on the springs. <laughs> this is Crazy Tokyo in the Featherweight Division. This armor plating is impenetrable to chainsaws and other pokey things. We will see. Here come two pokey things now. Matilda's tusks. And he's crazy Tokyo stuck on those springs. Oh, is Matilda stuck on those springs? You are. And so is Matilda stuck fast. And Matilda's in trouble. Look at that. And deactivate robots. Well, you were lucky there because you were about to be eaten. Right. Did you find that in a dustbin or make it? Bye. <laughs> You're supposed to have gone that way, past that enormous house robot which would have mangled your piece of litter, but you went the other way around and deservedly got stuck. Oh, never mind. <laughs> well, never mind. But the bin boys did well. 12.65 metres, they're in second place. Robot ears, stand by. Satan, driven by 15-year-old GCSE schoolboy Tom Barber, his brother, 13-year-old Sam, is back in the pits. This is our robot Satan based on a ball. We've got a number of different features. We've got wagging tail at the back, sound effects. We've got smoke machines in the nose and a laser for the eye. Three, two, one. And what Tom and Sam Barber didn't tell you is that Satan also moves as it goes along. Mad cow disease. These boys are bonkers already. Moves, that's a few bruises too many. I'm not too sure about the steering with that mad one eye, but it certainly is bullish. Oh, what a great run straight through! Look at the manoeuvrability in 10 mile an hour speed past the house robots. I cannot believe you beat both of them. Oh, brilliant. That was... Yeah, that was brilliant. Well done. And Satan through in the quickest time so far. Top of the leaderboard. Crazy Tokyo, 12.65 metres. Looks vulnerable. Robot ears, stand by. Driver Sam Rudgard is the youngest competitor in Robot Wars. He's only 10. This is the Demolisher. It's made from a Tyco engine and it's built for speed. It spikes here made for when zooming around to ram into the enemy and puncture its armour. Three, two, one, activate. And ten-year-old Sam Rudgard with the smallest robot in Robot Wars so far is speeding away and it's beaten just about everything and has! That's taking the Michael! Not that long ago, I'd have put some money on you not making it, yes? Yes. <laughs> well, well done, guys. That was a really neat run. Well done. The Demolisher, very quick, but not as quick as Satan or Cunning Plan. Robot ears, stand by. Bugs, driven by Michael Stacey, technician Stephen Devereaux to the left, and Michael Langdon, their Chesnut school teacher, to the right. Three, two, one. Activate. And for me, driver Michael, technician Stephen, and teacher, chief mechanic Michael Langdon have built one of the most attractive robots in Robot Wars. Bugs, from the Chesson School. This is a Bugs, and this is our design, loosely based on a ladybird. Nice and light, nice and agile, nice and fast. You can get up to four miles an hour. Actually, it looks like it's built out of my vacuum cleaner at home. Steering and dodging, 
But now comes the Crunch and Matilda. So lightweight, these smaller robots. Impaled on the spikes, Matilda gives it a right clout. If in doubt, clout it out, Matilda. Uncle Stacy, the driver, waiting his moment now to dodge past the house robot. Don't forget, the worst performer goes out of the competition. Dodges Matilda again. Stop the activate robots. Well, I reckon Sergeant Bash had a hangover, don't you reckon? Oh, well, we just couldn't get through. <laughs> you made every effort, for which you should be heartily congratulated. But not good enough to go beyond Crazy Tokyo's distance. Bugs fifth, 11.45 metres to beat for Vector of Armageddon. Robot ears, stand by. Last to go then, Adam Clark, who was once upon a time a mechanic at the Isle of Man TT motorbike races. This is the Vector of Armageddon competing in the featherweight class. It's designed around a brute force design with Lexan body armour on the front, high power torch for targeting purposes, and it's built on power. Three. Two, one, activate. Adam Clark and Vector of Armageddon. Which way is he going to go? Well, he attacks the first ramp, which is bold, because this has got a maximum climb of 35 degrees, this robot. Maneuvering it well up and over the first ramp. Now, if he gets up and over the second ramp, he'll have done enough. He'll have beaten bugs, and he will go through which way is he going now, though? Very cautious. And stuck on that second ramp. Only a ground clearance of one millimetre. And I think that's costing him here. He may not get up and over, and time is running out. Stop and deactivate robots. So, look, I've got to ask. Did Sergeant Bash burn out your communications? No, it was just beached on the uh, second ramp. It looks like the lip between the ground and the ramp was just too steep for it to get up. I know it looks like a grass-cutting box, but it's serious robot, though, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it's designed for very extreme ground clearance, and the ramp's just too steep for it, unfortunately. Are you gathered? Yeah, for this time, yeah. Well done, anyway. He makes rockets in his spare time, Adam Clark. He's rocketing out of Robot Wars. Bugs team, how bad was your damage? Very slight, we'll make it through. Of course you will, keep going, it's the end of event one and uh, things have to be repaired here. Demolisher had a very exciting round, Saturn had the fastest time going and, uh, oh, how's it going here? Um, alright, we're just putting a weapon on it, like this, and it will stop our right, stab things. Okay, well good luck with that, and Oliver, you've, you've got the hammer out then? Yeah, I've got a bit of a den to my robots. Take your aggression out on that. While the robots prepare for those trials, let's take a look at some action from Robot Wars around the world. Well, we don't have to travel too far, Jeremy. We will revisit the 1995 UK Robot Wars Championships in London, featuring two of the most powerful robots in the world today. The Master, built by Mark Satrakin, and Thor, designed by Shilling Robotics, both from America. What a night it was. Thor's hammer, and there's surely a killing blow! Slashing right to the heart of the hydraulic cabling! And Thor will be severely damaged and severely limited after that. I think I can see hydraulic fluid already pumping out. Oh, comes back down there with a hammer blow under the top of the saw. The saw's already been plugged and there is the hydraulic fluid pouring out and splattering the floor of the arena. It's getting skinny and slippery. And in comes the master again. He sends up weak point there right about the jugular vein. And Thor doesn't seem to have too much left to offer except vital engine blood and guts and gore. And he's out of it. And the master is surely one of the most powerful robots in the world. And for me, the star of the 1995 UK London Robot Wars. Now for some motor racing where pit stops are banned, but ramming is actively encouraged. It's a sport that could have been designed specifically for Michael Schumacher. Now, the grid positions for our five remaining robots were decided after studying their form in the gauntlet. It's a three-lap race around this figure-of-eight course, and the one that crosses the line last or covers the least distance is eliminated. Unless, of course, they were sensible enough to give the government a million pounds. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, 
One. Activate. I thought Crazy Tokyo got away with a false start, but we're off and running. Demolisher is flipped, and he's in trouble. He's okay again, though. Helped out there by Cunning Plan. Let's have a look at the start again. Yes, he's off to a false start, Crazy Tokyo, but we're off and running. And Demolisher is already recovering from that flip, and he's really buzzing now. Back in the race, and taking lead position. Ahead of Saturn, and look at the pace now of the Demolisher. Up to 40 miles an hour, completing the first lap. Satan is stuck. Demolisher off and running through the middle. Crazy Tokyo is stuck by Satan, but it's Demolisher setting the pace and through for a second lap already. And the others are trailing in its way. Back down the center stretch, around the final corner. It could all be over here. Oh my goodness me! He's flipped. It's flipped over the Demolisher. Too lightweight. Let's have a look at it again. Too cocky by half, and he took the corner too tight. Now what's going to happen? Because they can't write it. And meanwhile, cunning plan. Oh, until then, was being quite cunning, I thought. But he's making up ground very, very slowly. Cunning plan is through. Tokyo Joe seems out of it to me. Cunning plan. Now, looks like he could take advantage of Demolition's problem. He's around that final corner. Don't forget, it's all over after three laps. Will Demolition go out? Or has it done enough? He can certainly still block Cunning Plan, and Cunning Plan seems to want to push him over the line. Don't forget, it'll finish when Cunning Plan crosses his line, which I'm sure he will do in first position. But I think the Demolisher might have done enough, and that's all over. The race stops now. Oh, no, no, no. The one that looks like a dustbin or something is out. And you jumped the start. Come on. It wasn't my fault. Well, whose fault was it? Father Christmas's? It's whoever's got the other controller on the same frequency. That's the worst excuse I've ever heard in my entire life. You, on the other hand, you won it and tried to get that one back on its wheels. Yeah, after the first two laps, I lost count, so I thought I'd go around again, and I saw it, so I thought, why not? Give it a go. You'd actually help someone, even though they might be able to beat you. That's the way you go, isn't it? Oh, it's just such a nice sport, this caring and sharing. I've got to come to you. Can I just squeeze in here? I've just got to ask, this robot you've designed here, what's it called? Demolisher. Demolisher, but it only ever demolishes itself in the gauntlet. It got upside down and it did the same here. It's got a bit of a personality complex at times. It just gets a bit carried away. But it isn't half quick. Very. And you're still lost. <laughs> the way it goes sometimes. Well, anyway, well done. It looks great, like that marooned. But the Demolisher covered enough ground to go through. Crazy Tokyo didn't, and they're out. And after that mind-blowing first race, Bugs should get extra points for being cute, I think. And Gary, Demolisher is fantastic, but a bit too quick. Definitely too quick, but I think we'll correct that in the future and slow it down a bit. Congratulations on coming second, guys. Well done. And disappointment all round here. Yes, we're very disappointed, but it was beyond our control. We can't really help it. <laughs> Is that you losing well? Um, yes, we're losing very well, but we're fixing it up just in case they need us. And before we move on to tonight's semi-finals, let's take another trip down memory lane. This time visiting the American 1996 finals, which take place in the birthplace of Robot Wars, San Francisco in August every year. We join the action in one of the final melees of that live event, and it's worthwhile reminding ourselves that Robot Wars has been huge in America for five years. Let's just sit back and enjoy the action and watch out for the master in action again there. But this time Mark Satrakian, a designer who's worked on great movies like Men in Black, is on his home arena. The ultimate winner here, La Machine, dumping that one over the edge. Undisputed world champion for two years until losing its crown to an even meaner killing machine. So now the face-off battles, and you don't know who you're pitched against, do you? No. Who would you like to be pitched against? I'm not bothered. Anyone. <laughs> bugs. Yeah. It's Bugs against Cunning Plan. Oliver, what weapons have you got that can oppose Bugs? I've got a sticker. Disappointed we can't squash a bug first. <laughs> <laughs> but do you no. think you can squash this one? We're going to give it a good, good, uh, good tryout, so yeah, we'll test him. How do you think Saturn will fare? Um, pretty well, I think. It's a lot bigger. Um, got more power behind it. 
You're on your way to your arena with Cunning Plan. I have something to ask you. You met C-3PO and R2-D2. Did they inspire you? No. He's very nervous. It must have inspired you a little bit. If I may liken this show to a cup of cappuccino, we've now reached the point where the froth is gone. It's neat wake-up juice from now on in. Our four remaining robots will have a fight to the death as they compete for a place in the grand finals at the end of the series. Now, at the end of each bout, if there's no clear winner, well, our panel of adjudicators will make a decision based on four criteria. Damage, aggression, style and control. And these guys know what they're talking about. On the left we have Eric Dickinson, who's the only British veteran of robot wars in America. In the centre there's Professor Noel Sharkey, head of robotics at Sheffield University. And on the right, Adam Harper, holder of the land speed record at 150 miles an hour in a Sinclair C5. He's crazy. But not as crazy as what's about to happen below me. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one, activate. So basically cutting plan with the defensive wedge to batter bugs itself. That little aluminium ramming wedge in the front there. You dancing? I'm asking. You asking? I'm dancing. Come on, get stuck in. Oh, that's better. Underneath bugs. Cunning plan. You don't want to get on that grill. Oh, no. You won't get out from there. You will not get out of there, bugs. I didn't think it had the maneuverability that we saw earlier. There could be a problem. Perhaps dead metal. Oh. Those pincers could crush the life out of the bug. Could actually dead metal knock it back into play. I don't think so. Well, it looks like you're through the first semi-final. How does that feel? Good. Didn't put up much of a fight, did it? It was good. I like it. Like what? Bugs. Look at the paint job. You've got to like it. Yeah, the paint job's great, but it ran onto a grate and then capitulated immediately, and you just ran around in the middle looking silly. I had to go to big ones. <laughs> well, well done anyway. You're through to the next round. Congratulations. Yes, well done, Cunning Plan and Oliver through to the final, but I just wonder what did happen with Bugs, whether there was a problem. Bugs team, what happened there? We had caster on it and we changed it and it was, um, loose. We, we, it worked better with this one on it that was, um, steel. So, we changed it at the last minute and now we lost. How do you feel? Guide. <laughs> Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. Sat on like a bull rushes at the demolisher. Oh, you silly moo, you've missed him. <laughs> the demolisher's pace will simply carry it away from you like that. Got to get in to crush the demolisher against one of the house robots, and that's what they're trying to do. And young Shamrug Garble, he told, I would imagine, to keep out of trouble. Get away from everything. Run away to fight another day. What can the Barber Boys do with Saturn? Demolishers flipped on its side. And again writes itself away from Matilda. Oh, they're the meat of the sandwich. And Matilda saw comes down. Saturn is being chewed slowly. Oh, look at that. It's been saved by its opponent, the Demolisher! Unbelievable stuff! Down comes the saw, and it's the titanium shell of the Demolisher that saves it! And surely I think the Demolisher has done enough here! Shut on! Disarm! And out! And Samurai got only ten! Look at that! Walking tall! Demolisher's won. Yeah, I'm surprised. But secretly quite pleased. Maybe. We'll see you later. Unbelievable. Put it there.
That was epic. You have a laugh? Yeah. Did you see what happened to the other one? Hmm. Just got cut in half by Matilda's chainsaw, basically. Yeah, and you just spent the whole time running away. Is that what you asked him to do? Yep, that's our strategy. Keep out of trouble. Yeah, you think he did a good job? Excellent job. You did indeed. He's through to the next round. No weapons at all, but you can make it. Well done. <laughs> well done, that was brilliant. Look at this damage. Look at this damage. That's what Miss Hilda did. That's incredible. What else? It broke down, so. It went, just it, went there was down. a connection that right. just come off, so. We had problems with it yesterday. Now, in the stock car racing, Cunning Plan actually tried to rescue Demolisher. That's not going to be happening in the final. You guys ready? You ready? Get in your positions. Let's get cracking. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. Activate. Demolisher at the top of your picture is the quicker, but Cunning Plan is the heavier of these two featherweights. The Demolisher will be trying to keep out of trouble with Young Sam and the wheels. Oh, but the wheels have come off. Cease. The Demolisher is beaten by the Cease. Cunning Plan of Oliver Steeples. I'm not too sure whether the crowd wanted young Sam Rudgard to win it, but he had no chance with power like that. Oliver Steeples is the winner. Well, now, that was a hugely long final. Was that worked out? I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to go a bit longer, but... But you're through, and it doesn't matter, and congratulations. We'll see you in the grand final at the end of the series. We'll see you next week. Don't have nightmares. Good night. Sam, what happened to you? Well, I was trying to get away, but I just got caught by the edge of the um, coming down. How did you feel? Oh, a bit sad. <sighs> Next year. Um, maybe next year. Well done, you did very well to get this far.